What's up? I know y'all miss me because I miss you too. This ad that I saw on Instagram, it links to the Yeezy store where you can buy his clothes and his album, Vultures, uh, Volume 1. So, check it out. www.yeezy.com Go okay. to www.yeezy.com As you can see here, you're able to scroll, you're able to click on whatever item you want and purchase the item. And whether you think it's weird or creepy or whatever you thought about the AI ad, it has crazy engagement. There's so many people leaving comments, liking it, and viewing this AI video. And it's so you could make one. I promise you. you could. So all of that is, is it looks like he used like a one of those um, what would you look like in the '90s type apps, and then he also used a app to move, you know, to make things move all AI, but two different applications. And then lastly, he either had a voice actor or it was one of the voice actors in one of these apps. So potentially there was three elements to that, but it's something that you could absolutely do. You could do the voiceover yourself if the app doesn't have one. Like I said, there's so many apps like the, what would you look like in the nineties? What would you look like as a superhero? You can think of, there's, there's so many of these apps. And then um, there's a lot of apps that add motion. Very easy to do. But this is the type of stuff that I'm talking about. This is things that everybody could do and it's not extremely hard. It might take you an afternoon maybe to come up with an idea and create it. So um, this is something that I've been working on. I'm gonna see if I could like make it move and all of that. But I'll show y'all. These are just some of the AI images I made. Basically what I wanna do is make like a PS2 type of aesthetic. So I wanna look like I'm in a video game, but I want the video game to be moving or like mouthing the lyrics or saying, hey, check out this new EP. By the way, designer music on the way. I'm super excited about it. But yeah, I just had to get on here and share that with y'all real quick, man. What y'all think about that? What y'all think, for real? Leave it in the comments below, man, because it, it's really something that I feel like anybody could do. Like, it's not hard at all. If y'all want, I can create some videos as I'm making. I'm, I'm just going to edit all this together. If you're also a musician and you're trying to grow your YouTube channel, because it is highly recommended, I'm going to, at the end of this video, I'm going to have kind of a walkthrough of how I got to 100 subs and how I plan to get to 1,000 subs. So hopefully that helps y'all out as well. Stick around if you are interested in that content. But if not, then this video is done. Go ahead and click off now. But if you are trying to figure out how to get your first 100 subs, then stick around. And we're about to get into it right now. This video is really for people who are just beginning YouTube and kind of want to get their own subscribers or are thinking about starting their own channel. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed. So when these big channels post a video, YouTube is going to automatically show it to their subscribers first. That's the core audience, their core subscribers. And this is only if the core audience matches what this new video is talking about. So for this channel, if I was a big channel and I made another video about how to get more fans on Spotify, then YouTube is probably most likely almost guaranteed going to serve that video to my core audience. And then if, if my core audience does good with the video, then YouTube is going to push it out to more people. So obviously big channels have a greater advantage. But if I decide to upload a video about sports or about gambling or something, then YouTube isn't really going to know what to do with that video. They're not going to push it to my audience. That's for sure. So at that point, YouTube is going to use the words I use in the video. It's going to use the title and the thumbnail to try its best to find an audience. I'm sure there's more to it, but that's pretty much how the algorithm is going to try and decide what this video is about and who to show it to. I feel like it's important to bring up is that you could post two exact the same videos and they could have the same exact click through rate. Let's use 5%. One video could have 200 views and the other video could have a thousand views. And the difference between those two is the impression. So if YouTube shows my marketing video to a hundred thousand people and it gets a click through rate of 5%, it's going to do better than the video with 10%. That's about movies. 
um, but it only has a thousand impressions. It might, you know what I mean? I hope I'm explaining that good. <laughs> and then there's this thing called an audience profile. So basically an audience profile are people like you and me, we watch, we watch this creator, that creator, this creator, that creator, and sometimes this guy. And so our audience profile is all the videos that we typically watch. The reality is there's hundreds and thousands of people that watch the exact same creators and the exact same types of videos as you. So all the people that have the same channel interests and topic interests as you make up an audience profile. So YouTube uses the audience profiles to recommend videos to people like you and I. So one thing, probably the best thing you could do if you want to grow a channel is to make videos that's only going to be interesting to your core audience. And I know for some people that might get boring, but again, if you know who your audience is, like for me, my audience is myself. I'm, I have a nine to five job. I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of time, but I want fans. So that's, I make videos for people like myself and hopefully every video I drop will be interesting to y'all. So if this video is interesting to you, go ahead and give it a like, go ahead and subscribe because you know, the more you like, the more you engage with this video, it'll push the video out to more people. So, so when you release a video and it does well with your core audience, that's when YouTube is going to release it to a wider and wider audience. And that's when you start gaining subscribers and new viewers. And it starts with similar audience profiles. So you have your core audience, then you'll have a similar profile and another similar and another similar, and it goes wider and wider until the video isn't getting engagement anymore, basically. If you notice on your home page of YouTube, there's always one small creator to the right or to the bottom middle or something like that. And I believe this is because of websites like TikTok that's literally blowing up people overnight. So I think this is YouTube's version of that. So this is the perfect time to create a YouTube channel. Like I said, this channel is brand new and I'm here to stay, baby. There are those times where you'll release a video or a YouTube short and YouTube finds the exact audience for it. And those are the videos that, you know, once it drops, it goes straight up. And we love that. It is pretty rare, but it does happen. I had that happen with one of my YouTube shorts. Some of y'all are subscribers from that YouTube short. And I want to say thank you for subscribing. Welcome to the channel. Um, but yeah, that's that's another beautiful thing about this YouTube. About that, when I posted that short, it actually did not do anything for the first, I want to say two days. It took about two days and then it shot straight up. And now it's doing, you know, it's going steady up right now. It's not, you know, doing anything crazy like this, but it's just like steady, just every day getting a little bit more popular. So I love to see that. So the three things that kind of determine a YouTube video's performance is gonna be the click-through rate, it's gonna be retention, and it's gonna be the interaction or engagement of the video. And the click-through rate, if you don't know, is the number of impressions divided by um, divided by the number of clicks. The thing is creating ideas that are going to be interesting to a large number of people, but definitely interesting to your core audience. <laughs> I, you feel me? Like you want it to be, you want like people that's into different types of music. From for this is an example for my channel, I want people that's interested in country music marketing pop music marketing, hip hop music marketing. I want all these different types of people, but the one umbrella is music marketing. That's the core audience. So, And you'll know it's a good idea if you can explain it or title your video and, you know, in a few short words. That's, for me, that's how I know it's a good idea. Like, easy ways to get 500 listeners. I, did, I don't know. I'm trying to think on the fly here, but I feel like that's how you know it's a good video is that it's easy, easily explainable. So, and then I mentioned retention. So I believe 50% retention is supposed to be a good retention rate on a video. But like I said, my best video has a retention of about 20% and it's my best video. And then I have another video with 30% retention and it's my second best video. And then there's a video with like 40% retention and it's my third worst, third best or whatever. So I would say don't worry too much about the retention. 
But overall, the YouTube algorithm serves videos that grabs people's attention. That's all. that's the whole point of this. So you're you want to have an interesting title with an interesting overall idea with an eye catching thumbnail, whether that's just, you know, your face or whatever you want to use. But that's pretty much the formula. And if you watch this video and apply some of the things I'm talking about, I guarantee you will at least get to, you know, where I'm at.